Greetings, Lancers. My name is Garrett, and I'm here to give you a quick tour of the Lancer Core Helper tool. This is a tool that I've developed to help speed up gameplay on Roll20 and eliminate some of the more tedious aspects of managing games and characters using the Roll20 interface. Keep in mind this tool uses the Roll20 API scripting interface in order to function, so you'll need to have a pro subscription in order to use its features. That out of the way, let's get started. So you'll notice that I have a blank game here. Uh, chat window's open. I have only a couple characters that I've created here. Uh, a character named Hotfix and the aptly named Guy Who Break Thing. You also notice that I have a handout here. If we open that handout, you'll get some basic information about the core helper tool, as well as the command to get started being exclamation point LNCR underscore init. If we head over to the macros tab, you'll see that there are no macros set up. And with that out of the way, we'll just kind of enter in the instructions. So LNCR, init, enter. There we go. So it's generated some macros for us. Overcharge, harm token, get status, blah, 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 blah. And if we head over to the macros tab, booyah, here they are. Uh, for the sake of this, I'm going to check on 66 in my bar. Lancer help menu, more on that later. And NPC attack save. And the rest of these are token actions. So closing this window, if we click on NPC attack save, we get a generic attack save, just a flat d20 roll, plus several accuracy or difficulty, whichever you need. Same thing goes with 66, which is just that, 66, in case you need to roll damage for something. Great. Now, click on guy who break thing. You'll notice that we have some options up here now. Uh, these options are numbered so that they will always appear in this order so that you always know where to look for the thing that you need to do. This is kind of important. So we're going to go ahead and set some status here. Just take a general status, exposed, grappled, jammed, and overshield. And you'll notice that the token is now getting all of these statuses added to them. Uh, this is because I have specially set token markers thanks to uh, a user on the, I believe, pilot.net uh, re GM resources who graciously uploaded token markers for uh, Roll20. I had to rename them a little bit to get them to work, especially for things like Reactor Meltdown, which have a space in between them, and Roll20 freaks out about spaces, so you'll have to rename those in order to use it with this tool. If you don't have those, you can always just use this in order to set a status token marker um, of a kind that you want, like so. I'm not going to do that now. That said, we have all these statuses set. Now, ordinarily, we could just go through here and manually get rid of each of these, or we could click on Get Status here, which gives a list of every status on the token and gives us the option to either clear one particular one, we'll say grappled in this case, and you'll see that grappled has disappeared, or we can clear all at once, which is handy, because I don't want to go through all of these things line by line and do it one after another. Fine. Heading back to the sheet, we'll notice that guy who break thing has all of this stuff all set up. It has 10 hit points, 0 heat out of 6, and 5 repairs. So clicking on the token, you'll see harm token. We're going to do some physical damage. This deals armor piercing damage. So just input the amount of damage that you want the character to take. In this case, we'll say five. Submit, and you'll notice that it tells you who was hit. This case being Buster, which is, I believe, the call sign. How much damage they took. It does not specify what type of damage that's kind of inferred over the course of gameplay whatever that's going to be but you take this much harm and if we do that again let's say for the rest of his hit points you will notice it will automatically roll the structure table tell you the outcome give you a status output for different types of effects that are now applied to you in this case we got impaired uh, it hasn't been set to the token i'm not getting that deep down the rabbit hole for that, but you'll notice that the structure damage tab has automatically gone up. Hit points have already been restored to full. If we were to do something like harm the token above the hit point value, say 15 points of damage, it'll take that, reset, and then continue. 
So you'll always take the amount of damage that you need to take. Uh, if you take an overwhelming amount of damage, say 20, it will automatically roll for each time that you went over that limit. Neat. All right, so resetting that. Let's look at heat. We add some heat here, say one. It tells us, yep, we gained a point of heat, and we see that we gained a point of heat here. If we go just to the limit here, let's say two more, you'll notice that we've entered the danger zone, and we can click on this and learn what the danger zone is. And you'll notice that here, here we are, just like in the rules. If we add more heat, let's say up to the cap, we haven't gone over, we're at six out of six, which is just barely under the limit, and still in the danger zone, great. Add one more, push this over, and we automatically increase the core stress, we roll the table, and we take the heat, whatever that may be. And same thing applies here. So we can take multiple heat, let's say 10, and it rolls it again, however many it needs to, outputs whatever the outcome is, and automatically increments. So keep an eye on that. Next, overcharge. Overcharge has its own little table that it runs against. But as you might know, overcharge has several different levels. You have the first overcharge, which costs one heat. Next one costs a D3 of heat, a D6 of heat, and finally a D6 plus four heat. And this follows all of that and automatically increments both the core stress and the overcharge based on um, the amount of heat taken from the overcharge. So that's fun. And you'll notice that it's incrementing down here too. Next, we're going to have Stabilize. Stabilize has some interesting options here. We can either clear the heat and choose one of these. We're just going to reload. And you'll notice that the heat has been cleared. Now, factoid about this is clear heat or this second input doesn't really matter what you put here. These are just reminders of, oh, I'm going to clear burn. Okay, this is what I did. I cleared the heat and I cleared my burn. Uh, it doesn't actually clear the burn from your token. You have to do that manually, sorry. Um, but it is a fun reminder of just what you can do with the stabilize action. Now, next we're going to restore HP and just reload and we've restored HP, and we've reduced the repair counter by one, which is what we need to do. So let's say we have some heat now, and we've taken some damage, lots of damage, and mission is over and it's time for a full repair. Just hit the full repair button. And et voila. HP restored, structure tabs reset, heat reduced to zero, repairs reduced to max. Easy. Next is the loadout button. This took effort. So what this does is if you were to say open the help menu and go to the equipment tab, you'll get a list of manufacturers here. We're going to choose general massive systems and let's say we want to equip a weapon. Which one do we want? Uh, let's go with the cyclone pulse rifle, select a token and equip. Cyclone Post Rifle added, refresh your abilities and token actions. If I click off and click on again, I now have this equipped and I can just use this at will. And what this has done is if we go to the sheet itself and go to attributes and abilities, it has added it as an ability. This is huge. Also, nice damage. But this is huge because this saves you a lot of time. <laughs> Load out you can get rid of it. Okay, I've dropped it, it's off. Great, so let's set up a loadout here. We're going to put on the Cyclone Pulse Rifle again. And then we're also going to grab some systems and licenses. We'll say add the manipulators and we'll just make this for the Everest because why not? Great, we have the Everest on here, we have the Pulse Rifle, we have the manipulators and we can have virtually as many equipment as we want on one token. Um, 
It doesn't account for SP values or anything like that, although some of the equipment, such as the systems, does provide a reminder for you of the SP cost of that system. Uh, it does not track that for you. Uh, this is meant to be used in concert with CompCon. So you'd use CompCon to build your character and then just drag over whatever you need from the help tool here, and then it puts it right there. So clicking on loadout, we see that, oh, we have all this stuff here, and we can just individually remove all of these items, and they're all gone. And you'll notice that the abilities are gone. And the reason I like to do it this way uh, is because with it attached to the character sheet and not the token, anytime you drag out this token, it's going to have whatever you had equipped to your character sheet still on that token. For example, if I equip Cyclone Pulse Rifle and Manipulators and Everest again, they're back on here, and then I delete the token, I can still drag out guy who break thing, and I still have them. It's great. I love it. All right, now the rest of the help menu here. We have statuses, a list of the statuses and what they do. Actions, uh, quick references for things like your action economy, what you can do with the move action, the types of quick actions there are, full actions, etc., etc., etc. And definitions for those. We have some basic coverage on the rules. Let's say we want to get the gotchas on the rules for cover, well, then they're right here. What about tables? We have three tables here in case you need to roll a table, but you don't know exactly what the table you need is. Uh, well, maybe not that. Backup. Need to roll a table, you know what the table is. Let's say you need to roll down and out. Well, there you go. Congratulations, you are down and out. Or overheating, or uh, structure damage. It's all right here. This is more for the GM than the players because the players get this automatically. But if somebody were to say out of a heat of a moment, oh, I accidentally applied the heat and I went too far over, it's fine. Just um, roll manually and it's fine. Over here we have the equipment dictionaries. This was no small thing. I have a nice little tagline here as well as weapons, systems, and licenses. So we can pick up whatever we need. We can see what's in our license that we have, pick up a frame, uh, find a bug at the last minute, that's fun. List of tags, and list of talents. So we could take Black Thumb, Rodeo, and just equip that so that we know that, yes, we have Black Thumb Rodeo. And we can reference that on the fly, although this will push it to the public area simply because sometimes you might want to read up on whatever this is and you want to know what it is now instead of going through the entire help tool in order to find it. And yeah, that is the entire help tool. I hope that you will all find this very useful in the future and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.